In this video, I am going to show you data table operations that you can do using invoke code. Spend some few minutes of your time to learn these techniques. So what is the exercise? The exercise is we have to filter rows from a data table. So what is the scenario? The scenario is imagine you are working in HR automation and you have a list of employees in a data table. You need to filter out employees whose age is greater than 30. Pay a close attention to the table. It has got names of the employees. It has age. It has department. What is the requirement? You have to filter out whose age is greater than 30. Looking at this data, you can clearly say Alice is greater than 30 and Mikhail is greater than 30. So the output should show this two rows of data. How can you do it in invoke code? It's pretty easy. All you have to do is spend few minutes on this video. Coming back to UAPA Studio, the very first activity that you need, build data table. I'm going to build a data table. Click on this data table button. And here there are already few columns created. We all we have to do rename it. So the table contains name, age, department. So all you have to do simply click on this type name and click on OK. And then click on this and say age. Integer 32, that's OK. And the last column is department let me type department and click on ok now we need to enter the data in here so the first row is john 28 it so i'll say john age 28 tab it and then hit on enter my next data is Alice35HR. Alice tab 35 tab HR. Hit on enter. My next row is Mikhail 40 finance. Mikhail tab 40 tab finance. 40 tab finance and then hit on enter. Next. Sophia 25 IT. Sophia tab 25 IT. So now my data table is created. Okay, all the data table is created. All I have to click on OK. The next activity that you need is invoke code. Hit on enter. And we have to create few arguments. Let's see my variable panel, which is currently blank. Let's create few arguments. Now, once the data table is created, this has to be stored in a variable. So control K, I will name it as employee DT. Hit on enter. Click on edit arguments. And I'm going to pass this employee DT. So let's create an argument saying in underscore emp dt employee dt the direction should be in the type should be system dot data table and the value should be employee dt and as an output what you need out underscore filtered data table and then here the direction has to be out and it should be a data table and let's create a variable called filtered dt and then click on ok pretty simple one now once we have set the arguments it is the right time to go to the edit code let me expand this so the best practice of coding is to put some comment so what is this code is for so vv.net code to filter data table 
okay now we will create a temporary variable inside the code saying dim filtered dt okay filter dt as data table and i am going to clone the in underscore employee dt so that what would happen the temporary data table i have created here for the code filter dt is going to have the structure of the data table so it has name it has age and department so the entire structure of the data table will be cloned here without any data only the structure will be cloned when you write clone all right after that what i have to do i have to loop through this employee dt to see what are the data are they row by row and then find out which row whose age is greater than 30 for this you have to write something called for each okay so here you i'll declare a variable called row as data row so a data table consists of what data rows so i'm creating a variable here called you can put any variable you want you can say i a b c d so i'm simply writing row here okay this is just a variable so for each data row in in underscore employee dt so actually what i am doing i am looping through this in underscore employee dt data rows so here you have to put a method called rows rows means it is going to loop it is going to supply one one row to this variable through the for each loop for each data row in this is the data table it is going to supply each row from the data table to this variable so once it supplies what i can do i can write a if condition if if row what is the column name age right so row row variable is a data row variable it's going to say point out to the age column now the age column if it is greater than 30 then what i should do this is the filter data table so what i will do in the temporary filtered data table okay then use control space here i would like to import that row the entire row if it is matching the condition then import the entire row so which is the variable holding the entire row from this data table row variable so all i will do within the parenthesis i will simply pass the row variable so what is happening here the filter data is a exact structure it has a similar structure of employee dt the moment any row is fulfilling this condition then i am importing that row into the blank temporary data table so that means the table is getting added with the new values when this condition is met so when you have written if don't forget to end the if and then for each loop you have to write a next so that the looping this is a construct so the looping would happen here until the last row available in the employee data table so once this is all done what i will do i have got a variable called out under filter dt i am going to use this filter dt the temporary data table that we have in the code i am going to supply the value of this into this that's it now there is a small problem i'll say the moment i click on ok you see there is an error has come what is the error option strict on prohibits operand of type object for operator greater than so it is not allowing you to use the greater than symbol why it is happening i'll tell you so anytime you're writing this vv.net code when you are invoking even though the age is a integer 32 kind of a data table it is a good it has to be converted okay so first you have to explicitly convert it so say convert to int 32 why you have to convert because this row age will add an object okay so the object has to be converted to a specific data type it will not come as with data type it will come as an object when you loop through so that's why you have to first convert it to a specific data type and then compare so i've converted to integer 32 and then i can compare okay greater than 30 okay now let's see the error has gone all right now what i will do the next thing i want to see the output to see the output there is something called output data table activity you have already you might be already aware of and here in this i'll supply 
the filtered dt variable in the arguments we have created right filter dt so this is what i am going to supply once i have supplied i'll create a variable here called text dt okay text dt now this text dt i can use it in a message box message box however you want you can print it if you would like to write to an excel that also you can do so now i'm um, using i want to print it so i need the text data table we saw this is the data table name age department out of this the output i am expecting is alice 35 and michael 40 if i am going to run this let's see what is the output that comes out okay it has executed and you can see the output on my screen name age department alice 35 hr michael 40 finance so these are the two data rows which has been filtered using the invoke code activity so with this the first exercise is complete our second exercise is add a new column to a data table using invoke code so for example if you see the data table it has got first name last name and then the output is having a new column called full name so it's concatting john doe and showing the output john doe alice smith alice smith so the scenario is write a vivi.net script to add new column called full name to an existing data table and populate the first name and last name by combining the first name and last name columns so let's see how this can be done in the uipa studio coming back to the studio i'm going to click on this data table now this data table i have already pre-created it so that i spend less time we saw how to design a build data table in the exercise number one so it has got first name last name and age the fourth column we need as an output is the full name all right so now this data table is getting stored in a variable called employee dt the next activity what i need is a invoke code and let's create few arguments the very first argument i am going to create in employee dt tab the direction has to be in the type has to be string dot data table and here you will say employee dt you will supply the input data table we'll create a second argument out underscore employee dt the direction of this is supposed to be out data table okay and i'm going to create a new data table variable called out employee dt hit on enter and then click on okay so all our arguments are set let's write the code now the very first thing let's put some comments vv dot net code to add a new column to a data table okay now which is your data table first of all okay think so what is the data table name in underscore employee dt you can hit on control space to get the variable now in this one this data table has columns correct what i want to do i want to add a column see pretty simple so this data table has columns i want to add a column use parenthesis now what should be the name of your column the name of the column should be full name and then what should be the data type of this column so to define the data type you have to write something called get type this is the method okay so get type and within the parenthesis i am saying string so that means what I'm doing, this is my data table. It has columns. I want to add a column and I'm supplying the value and data type. It should be full name, the name of the column and the data type of the column should be string. That's simple. So now what happened? Now the employee DT has been created. It has a new column, but the new column doesn't have any data. I need to add a data. Now to add data, what I have to do? First of all, I need to loop through the existing data table the input employee dt so for this how you write last time you saw it for each row so row is a variable here you can keep any name you want so for each so what kind of a variable it is you have to define it data row in 
what is your input data table in employee dt dot rows so this i have explained last time just to recall for each data rows okay data row in this employee data table so each row in this data table is going to loop through okay and you know the loop should end with a next so this is your loop construct and within this you have to write your code so what is the code you have to write you are going to add data into the full name so you will take the variable name row and then you would write the column what is the column name we have created just now full name correct okay so i have written the full name e is equals to what is the rule first name plus last name this is the rule correct so i have to add first name and last name that's simple okay that is the rule so here the full name all i have to simply say row first name dot to string i told you anytime you are trying to use when you are looping through this row is a variable and this will act as an object so object means it it doesn't have a data type so you have to define it a data type so i am saying uh, you have to convert it to a data type so object dot to string so row first name dot to string you have to say and then to concatenate you will be using a ampersand symbol you would like to concatenate with space also first name space last name correct so i'll given a space again ampersand and then i will write my next column name what is the next column name last name so first name and last name you are trying to add and remember to convert it to dot to string because this row dot last name acts an object it will you have to convert to a specific data type so, all right so now the full name is constructed so once the full name is constructed every time the loop is running the data is getting entered into this row finally what i have to do i have a variable called out underscore employee dt e is equals to in underscore employee dt i'll simply pass the employee dt value to out argument and my code is done let's click on okay let's have the output data table activity and here the variable that you have to use is out employee dt out employee dt and the text let's create a text text dt text dt okay fine let's use a message box as i said you can also write to an excel okay that is the exercise try it out write to an excel and ping in uh, you know write a comment if you have done that exercise writing into an excel so here i will say text dt okay and let's run it let's see how the output is coming okay now you can see the output has come so first name last name age full name so john alice michael sofia and look at the last value john doe so first name last name it has combined alice smith michael brown sofia green so it has finally gave me a new column by concatenating two different values from the first column and the second column so with this our second exercise is complete please do comment in the comment section of the video is this videos are helping you are you learning something new please do comment and let me know thank you for watching